Welcome to Curatorial Clips, short videos by the curators at the Freeland Museum of Art and faculty colleagues on works in the collection or in areas of our expertise. The Freeland Museum and the University of Virginia stand on the territory and homelands of the Monacan Nation. My name is Adriana Greci Green, my pronouns are she, hers, and I serve as the curator of Indigenous Arts of the Americas. In this curatorial clip, I'm going to talk about a jacket in our collection made by Native American clothing artist, possibly of Salogi or Crow, of the late 19th century. You see the jacket here on the right in an installation photograph from the exhibition, Reflections, Native Arts Across Generations, at the Freeland Museum last year. We see it from the back. The jacket is facing a row of prints by the artist Wendy Redstar. I do want to note that all works are credited at the end of this short video. Native American artists across North America create beautiful clothing and regalia to wear on celebratory and ceremonial occasions. The artistry of clothing can express the intersections of community values and individual identities. Garments such as this jacket demonstrate how artists hold the knowledge, the skills, the dedication for such achievements, and how their aesthetic values are passed on across generations. Here are some pictures of the jacket while we were installing it. The jacket came to the Freeland from the descendants of Province McCormick of Berryville, Virginia. McCormick served as an inspector for the United States Indian Service, and he traveled across the country inspecting Indian agencies and boarding schools. He was at Crow Agency in Montana in 1894 and in Wyoming in 1895, so he could have come across this jacket then or during other trips to these regions. As you see, this jacket is beautifully embroidered with beadwork. It is similar to a few other jackets. like these two. The one on the left is attributed to an Absaloki or Crow artist, probably around Montana. The one on the right to a Tsutina or Sarsi artist, also a little further west, so Wyoming, Idaho, that whole area in the Saskatchewan, Alberta. Many of these jackets are painted with yellow pigment, which really sets off a gorgeous beadwork embroidery. The colors really pop the blues, the purples, the greens. And you can see the trim. On the right, it's a fur trim around uh, different areas of the jacket. On the left, it's made with cloth. Both of these have this cloth banding around the lower edge. You see the same detail on our jacket blue ribbon sewn right above the lower fringe, a little worn in places. Another cloth is this striped, black striped cloth, cotton cloth. It's the lining of the jacket, and the artist has folded it over to create the trim. And we follow the striped edging all the way up to the collar, which we close here, and you can see the fringe detail around the collar, and uh, the jacket is closed with a whole bunch of very small buttons. You see one enlarged on the right. These are metal buttons, probably brass or plated buttons. And here, a detail of the beadwork on the cuff. You see this very elaborated, thick design element. And the fringe, this triangular short fringe, it's inserted into the seam of the cuff. Let's take a closer look at a few of the design elements now. Here we're looking at florals. Some are more abstracted than others. When Wendy Redstar looked at our jackets, she, she suggested that 
some of the flowers might be Pasca flowers, like the spiky, pointy one the, with the pink. Well, the blue flowers might be sago lilies, and you see a picture of that on the right, and you can see how the artist has taken kind of the, the real flower and flattens it out, but also lets us see inside it, so it's almost like multiple views on this two-dimensional surface it, that's out. These flowers grow on crow homelands, so they're recurring design elements in beadwork and the aesthetics of this region. And a closer look still, so we can look at the beadwork. See how the artist embroidered the contours of each element, their concentric contours really stand out. You can see the outline done with a white translucent bead, clear beads on the left. Then there's a darker blue that really sets off the outline of the flower. Then the fill in with this light blue, these milky light blue beads. And at the center there are parallel rows of faceted metal beads. I assume these are nickel cut beads. And then the right, you see that the pointy mm -hmm. flowers have brass beads. The color is different in the metal beads. The stems or tendrils for these floral arrangements are rendered with alternating segments of clear beads and blue beads, which is really a pretty effect, very delicate. Zooming back out here to the front and back views of the jacket, we can see how the entire jacket provides a field for the artist to articulate the beadwork design. Two vertical structures down the front, down the back, almost two columns, and then down the sleeves, each sleeve on the back side of the sleeve. This vertical alignment is anchored by each central floral element that punctuates the verticality, the column. And out of there, you see these two branches that come out in opposite directions, each one terminating with an individual floral element. And as we really look at these floral elements, we notice that some are not flowers at all. They're flags, American flags. Some of you may have already been noticing that. Both images here are from the back side of the jacket. And here in close up, we see the four white stars filling the blue field, the white clear bead outline of the whole flag, and then the stripes are rendered with brass beads and red beads. It's very nice how the cut beads catch the light, gives it a little sparkle. We also slowly take in the vertical direction of the stripes. The flags are positioned mirroring each other, but they hang down the stripes with the stripes vertical. And what is even more interesting is that on the front of the jacket, which we see here spliced, the left and the right sides, the artist has beaded the emblem as a shield rather than a flag keeping the same compositional format, but creating shields. And notice how the artist has switched the colors. On some shields, the stars are on a blue field with red stripes, and in others, the stars are on a red field with green stripes. As mentioned earlier, in our exhibition, this jacket was placed in conversation with a series of prints by the Absalogi or Crow artist, Wendy Redstar, including the print shown here. You see how Redstar used red marker to trace over this historic portrait of Tubeli. The red lines help us see the floral beadwork on his own jacket. And the scribbles in red that you see all over the image are comments that Redstar inscribed on the portrait. And two of these comments point specifically to the jacket. In one, she states, quote, this jacket is inspired by European jackets worn by military men. 
And the other one is more from the perspective of two belly, or so as she imagines. And she says, my jacket was popular amongst the river crow in the 1879s. So I will here close this short curatorial clip with words that Red Star wrote for our installation of the jacket. And I like the poignancy of her thoughts looking at the flag designs. She said, quote, the motifs suggest multiple meanings, biculturalism, perhaps, or the accommodation and or appropriation of a symbol of power, the dominant culture's flag. Thank you for watching, and I hope you have enjoyed this curatorial clip.